Nico Pico Star here, and I want to give my thoughts on some questions about vibrato. Uh, some common questions. So the first question is how to learn vibrato. Um, so my my tip for you would be you gotta. This is a hard question, but how you gotta understand how vibrato works, right? So when if you understand how vibrato works, then it's much easier to learn. So how vibrato works is you play the note and then you roll your finger lower. And it, it makes the note go and then you roll it back. So for example, if I just do a vibrato on C sharp or D It sounds like vibrato, right? So what I'm doing is I'm actually going C sharp and then I roll my finger lower to C natural and then I roll it back to C sharp. Now I'm exaggerating, but the reason I exaggerate is because when I go faster, the faster I go, the it gets less and less wide so like if i go faster that that wave is going to get less and less wide so so vibrato is all about that control you have over that movement so the the more control you have over that the more you can mess around with your vibrato and have a lot of fun right so how do you actually gain total control without spazzing? You see people spaz on vibrato all the time, right? Not all the time, but sometimes. Sometimes you see people spaz when they try to vibrato and it becomes like this. That is, that shows that they have no, they're not controlling it. They're like, t they're tensing up their arm and it's just spazzing, right? You're not, you're not actually, you're not actually controlling each wave like like when I do vibrato like this I might actually have control over how wide the wave how wide the waves are and how fast the waves are and that's that's one of the reasons why you can actually practice vibrato with a metronome you can actually practice vibrato with a metronome so like if you turn on a metronome you could actually Make sure that every speed you have control over that. You can actually. Um, so knowing this will help, should help you in learning vibrato. And then another thing to keep in mind is uh, it's a very motor skill skill, right? It's, it's, a, it's a very long term skill. So don't try to be good at vibrato. It's not like learning one simple thing. It's like, don't try to be good at vibrato very quickly. Think long term and you won't stress yourself out over it. Alright? Think like it's something <clears throat> it's something that you do a little bit every day, you get a little bit better at it every day. And then you'll have a nice little curve improvement on your vibrato as you learn it. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to talk. So knowing that, it, it should help you a lot in learning the vibrato. Um, there's a lot of tips, but that's, that's for another video, maybe. Just basic how vibrato works and how you should go about learning it. Uh, knowing how it works mechanically is going to help you learn vibrato. Okay, so the second question is why wait to learn vibrato? Uh, that's, that's a popular question because a lot of times people are like, my teacher doesn't want me to learn vibrato. My teacher says I can't learn vibrato, right? Then my teacher will teach me when he wants to teach me, which is sometime in the next 10 years. 
Uh, there is a reason why you might want to wait to learn vibrato because the main reason is it takes away your brain power when you're trying to do other things. For example, if you're trying to work on how smooth and straight your bow is, right? You don't want you want to focus on that, and you don't want to be doing vibrato. You you don't want to like be concentrating on vibrato and that at the same time, right? You want to do one thing at a time. Right? So if you're if you're just practicing your vibrato, focus completely on vibrato. If you're practicing to make your bow straight and have a smooth bow stroke and have a nice sound, totally practice, totally focus on that. And don't try to do too many things at once. Because violin is a very complex multitask instrument, right? You could say that about a lot of instruments, but violin is very multitask, like crazy. And then if you're trying to uh, concentrate on playing your passage cleanly, evenly, or in tune, that's, that's a lot of things. That's a lot of things to concentrate on at the same time. If you're trying to wiggle while you're doing all of those things at the same time, it's, go inevitably, it's going to take away from the other things. It's going to take away from the other things and you're just going to s slow down, I guess. So, I think you can learn vibrato if you understand this. Like, you can learn, learn vibrato very early on, I think. If you're, like, very mature and you understand this, you should try to do one thing good at, at a time and not try to do everything and then just... I The, the, the quote comes to mind, like, uh, what's that quote? Like... Jack of all trades, master of none, right? If you're just like doing everything at the same time, you're not gonna be really good at one thing. So just try to work on one thing at a time. So if you're vibrato, just work on vibrato. All right, that, that's, that, I think that's the main reason why uh, a lot of people are told to wait. Because in the beginning, there's too many things to learn, right? You're, 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 you're trying to, you're trying to do a nice bow stroke. That's a huge task. You're trying to learn fingerings. You're trying to learn like where you're pressing. You're trying to play evenly. You're trying to have a clear sound. You're trying to you're trying to stay away from the bridge. You're trying to distribute your bow. You're trying to uh, lighten up near the frock. So many things. Adding vibrato. Oh man, that that might be too much. So that, that's like probably the main reason. And then the other, um, next is options to take vibrato to the next level. Okay. So since we talked about how vibrato works, right? Vibrato works, now you know how vibrato works. Taking vibrato to the next level, um, I'm gonna describe it with two, two things, okay? Obviously, vibrato is like more complex than this, but I'll, I'll describe two types of vibrato. I'll, I'll just describe it like this. So, the first thing I'm gonna call is awesome vibrato, and the second thing I'm gonna call sad vibrato. So, think of I like I like to think of it like this. Awesome vibrato is when the moment your finger slaps down. The moment that it slaps down, you immediately do a very big, fat, juicy vibrato. Like, immediately. So, for example... finger hits I immediately go into a big fat vibrato like take no time uh, the more immediately you go into the big fat vibrato the more awesome you sound uh, 
I'm just saying it like that. It's more complex than that, but that's just an easy way to describe it, okay? And then the sad vibrato is when you play a note and then you start playing the no vibrato and then you like ease into a vibrato. It's like very sad. You see this? Play. No vibrato, right? And then I ease into a vibrato. See? Don't you feel sad already? It's just like two very different opposite ways of thinking, right? So knowing that, uh, that will definitely help uh, you change moods when you vibrato. And then the, um, if you want a general thing to always think about when you vibrato is connect vibratos. So a general thing to always think about is like, Always, always, if you're vibratoing one note and you have a note coming up, start thinking about trying to do the exact same. Like if you're doing this and you have no, another note coming up, try to do the exact same wave, like without any changes. Like try to keep, keep the wave going. So a lot of time, if you um, actually listen very, very carefully, the uh, vibrato that doesn't sound quite as good is when people do the do a vibrato. At the end of the note, it goes into a line. There's no vibrato. And then the next note comes out, and then the vibrato comes back. It's actually like a gap. Uh, if you listen very carefully, you could hear gaps in just playing in general. If you listen very carefully. And then that's actually... Um, that's actually a big thing that causes people to sound a little bit iffy. You're just like, this person sounds a little iffy. I'm not sure what. That's like one of the reasons why sometimes we're about us, so, someone sounds iffy. If you listen very carefully, you can see it. And then if you actually fix that, if you actually like are very careful and fix that and make the vibrato wave going to the next note, like really, really connected and stay in the same, wave it sounds it's gonna sound a lot better you you really notice it when you start recording so yeah that's all i have i hope this is helps people and uh thank you all my subscribers for watching my channel i'll see you guys next time